In the first episode, we visit some lesser known West Coast beaches, taking some interesting inland treks and seeing some very little known shipwrecks on the Fraser Coast. We also discover some unusual coastlines, visit Lake Mackenzie, Kingfisher Bay and the World War II Army Camp, among a few other things. Bearing down the KM3, first time. I add down to 17 psi, that looks pretty good. There's still obviously options to go down lower if I need to, however, it rained last night. Um, really uh, pretty high humidity, so I reckon the sand will be pretty good on the other side. There he is, Alan from PJ's, how am I? Thank you too. Good. I'm all ready to go. Get down. Sounds good. Our first obstacle was Inskip Point, which is quite notorious for people getting stuck. I stuffed up here a bit, saw the sign too late, then couldn't decide whether to go left or right. While fens have existed on Fraser Island for thousands of years, it was only in 1996 that scientists recognized them as such and appreciated their significance. With the salt marshes, lakes and sand blows, the fens are the only open space on Fraser Island bereft of trees. They are difficult to traverse by any means at all and very uninviting for humans. Fens are fundamentally based on peat and are formed into a network of potholes which hold very acidic water. Yet it is this unfriendly acidic environment which establishes a habitat suitable for some of Fraser Island's endangered species, including acid frogs and ground parrots. Mm. Your kitchen drawer. Yeah. Let's go learn how to Organize it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Tony's Gap departure lounge for lunch. This is one of the many beautiful freshwater creeks you have on Fraser Island. The trek to Lake Mackenzie is pretty chopped up and has quite a few crossovers and uh, deep holes. This shows a good example between our two suspension setups. My Land Cruiser 105 stays very leveled and just glides over the holes, while the Leaf Sprung uh, 70 series cruiser um, shows far more movement because it doesn't have the suspension travel. The best time to visit Lake Mackenzie is early in the morning or late in the afternoon, before all the tour buses arrive or after they left. We were here a bit later in the afternoon, so there were still a few people there. At the moment we are heading down to the west coast here on Fraser inland via a very less frequent track really. We'll see where that brings us. I have no idea but uh, one thing I know I haven't been here before so we want to see where it gets us to. Wangolba Creek is a point where the Fraser Venture barges land the ferry which go from Harvey Bay. The Wangolba Creek has its source in the Pyle Valley it flows through Central Station and ends up in the ocean here at Wangova Creek. The Ungova campground is a small but nice walk-in campground, so you have bollards, you can't drive there right away. But like every West Coast campground, it has plenty of mozzies and midges, so just keep that in mind. That's why usually it's the West Coast ca everywhere. campgrounds are all empty. In here, dingo proof locker. This is what remains of the Ungowa jetty. A bit slippery. Not a big friend of heights, as you can see, but that is it. Coming back down will be interesting. That's a brilliant example of the coffee rock which is all organic plant matter. 
so it's no rock can scratch it but um, yeah that's pretty much what nearly all the rock on the island is coffee rock the Ungova campground also has a toilet block which is located behind the boat shed a lot of the tracks were not well traveled and on multiple occasions we needed to remove trees Amazing here, these old trees. Look at that old wreck. The Ceratodos was a 400 ton steel dredge which was converted to a sand barge and run ashore in Fern Creek on Fraser Island a while ago. In the background you can see the Palma, a 289-ton steamer, which was converted to a lighter before being abandoned. Central Station. Our camp for the night. I just wanted to play you briefly our wake up call at 4.30 in the morning at Central Station. I have heard loud cicadas before, but that was definitely the loudest and the earliest in the morning I've heard them ever start. Hello uh, guys, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Or not even. Good morning. It's uh, 5.30 in the morning and we were getting early up to go to Lake Mackenzie for a sunrise. But it started raining just 10 minutes before we, um, yeah, before we start to pack up. So we packed up anyway. We'll drive on now and see what it brings. We are Lake Mackenzie now, 5 o'clock in the morning, watching the sunset. And we had quite a bit of wind last night and we camped, oh, that was a big bang. And we camped at Central Station under these huge trees. So I was a little bit concerned, but that's what it was. Um, my concerns weren't completely unfounded. That's at Lake Mackenzie. Our next destination was the Kingfisher Bay Resort. Not really to stay there, but I had never seen it. And from there we could walk to the Fraser Commando School and to the Mackenzie Mill. Morning. Kingfisher Bay has the Kingfisher Bay Ferry, which has three return services, which depart river heads around 20 minutes from Harvey Bay daily and land at the Kingfisher Bay Resort.
The Inca of the Mahino Shipwreck is now located at Kingfisher Bay Resort. We're just taking the walk from Kingfisher to Mackenzie's Jetty and to the old army installation. To see the Mackenzie Jetty and the World War I Commander School, you can walk at low tide along the beach. Uh, when it's sunny, it's pretty hot. Or you can use the inland walk, which we did, which goes up and down some hills, but it's a pretty easy walk and has plenty of shade, as well as some beautiful lookouts, as you can see here. The Fraser Commando School, FCS, functioned as an important part of Australia's special operation program during the World War II. Between October 1943 and August 1945, it trained over 900 personnel of the Service Reconnaissance Department, SRD, the cover name for Special Operations Australia, the Australian version of the United Kingdom Special Operation Executive. Skills taught, among others, included unarmed combat and physical training, jungle craft, fall boats, canoes, demolition and weapons training. It's more uphill walking, very thick swamp or jungle here. And then we're going to make our way towards a jetty. Used to be a big one. These Mictiris longicarpus, also called soldier crab, are quite an interesting little species of crabs. They feed on detritus in the sand, leaving round pellets of discarded sand behind them. The males may form into large armies which traverse the beach at low tide before the crabs dig into the sand to wait for the next low tide. I'll leave you with a few more impressions of Mackenzie's jetty. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoyed the first episode of this Fraser trip. If you like to see more, I would greatly appreciate your help in promoting my channel by subscribing, linking, sharing and leaving me a comment in the comment section. If you can afford, maybe even consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can specify to donate a small amount per video. It would really help me to recover some of the cost for the videos. In the next episode, we get caught out in the dark and need to find something to sleep for the night. We also visit a rarely seen sand blow with a local photographer, Peter Myers. And among other things, also have a look at Moon Point and Postan's logging camp.